Hello, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to our program today, Caring for Backyard Chickens. This project was made in part, made possible in part by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Today, we have backyard chicken enthusiast, Laura Helseth here to talk to us about caring for backyard chickens. Just a note though, um, depending on where you live, it may or may not be legal to have backyard chickens. And Laura won't be able to answer like the specifics of that for you. So you're gonna have to look that up on, yourself, uh, on your own. So just make sure you look that up before you um, start <laughs> you know, buying chickens. So please welcome Laura. Hello. Hi everybody. Hi. All right, Laura. I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, I'll be back for question time. So we'll take questions at the end. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop those in the chat and we'll be answering those at the end. Excellent, excellent. Um, hello, everybody. So like Sarah said, um, make sure to check your specific areas. Um, I do cover that a little bit, obviously, very briefly. Um, because I don't know where everybody lives. So hi everybody, my name is Laura. Um, I actually do have a bachelor's degree in agriculture um, that I have used not at all. So I, I do know a few things actually from school about caring for backyard chickens. Um, I did work with animals for almost 15 years. Um, and currently we have three chickens, a dog, a cat, a rabbit, and a saltwater fish tank. We have had a beehive and a snake and all kinds of other animals. So I know a little bit about a lot of things, not a lot about specific things, if that makes sense. I'm not a professional presenter, please forgive me. Um, so let's get into it. So some lingo that you might need to know before you get your chickens. Um, chick or biddy is what a baby chicken is called. Obviously, I think everybody's probably heard the word chick before referring to chickens. Um, as they grow up, a pullet is a female chicken that has not yet started laying eggs. So that's kind of like their teenage years. Um, they're only pullets for a, a few months. They, go, they grow pretty quick. Um, a hen is an adult female chicken. A cockerel is the male equivalent of a pullet. So when a male chicken, also known as a rooster, um, is in his teenage years, he's called a cockerel. Rooster or roo is, of course, an adult male chicken. Um, and then a few words that you might need to know as far as um, chicken anatomy. The comb is the thing that's on the top of their head. You can't really see my hand. I'm really bad at this. Um, and then the vent is the hole where they um, defecate and lay eggs from. It's the same hole. So that is um, those are generally the two specific body parts that you'll want to know because the comb is going to tell you more about if the baby chicken that you got that you thought was a female is not a female. Um, they're bigger and more pronounced. And roosters also have spurs on their back feet. Um, but most of the time when you get baby chicks, they're pretty good about identifying uh, males from females. <clears throat> so like Sarah mentioned at the beginning, you definitely want to check your city or county, depending on where you live for regulation. Um, the codes vary from city to city and from city to county and from county to county and state to state. So where I live in Deltona, we have a five bird limit, which means we can only have up to five chickens. Um, roosters are not allowed, but tell that to the neighbor behind us that has a rooster that decides to crow at three in the afternoon. Um, I mean... Obviously, they're really strict here, but we definitely don't have any roosters. Um, there's also regulations as far as their housing, the fencing, um, the pen that you keep them in. Uh, there's a lot size. Your lot has to be a certain size before you're allowed to have chickens. They can't be seen by the neighbors. There's 
um, a maximum square footage for the coop. There's several pages of regulations where we live for the chickens, um, including you have to take a class through the University of Florida um, IFAS program. Uh, those classes are free, and I do have a link to that at the end. So you'll be able to look at that and write it down. Um, you don't, I don't think you have to live in Florida to take the class. So it might be worth checking out there on Zoom so you can take them virtually, which I think is definitely going to give you a lot more information than this. This is kind of more of an intro class. Um, that's going to be the specifics on the actual raising of the chickens. Um, you definitely want to talk to your neighbors because even though they, you may not have roosters, chickens are very loud. <laughs> They're very loud. And I do have some video clips to uh, share with you because that's always fun. Um, <clears throat> they can be a little bit stinky, even if you clean their coop uh, daily which you should, it's kind of like, like I said here, it's the equivalent of having a cat. Um, you have to scoop your cat's litter box at least once a day, if not twice a day. You want to change or scoop your chicken coop uh, a couple of times a day for feces because that stinks. Um, it is a little bit more of a challenge to find a pet sitter for chickens than it is a cat. So that is something you want to consider before you get chickens you have plans to go anywhere, who's going to take care of your chickens while you're gone. Um, so generally, a neighbor can come in and let them in and out. Uh, you don't have to actually put them in their coop at night. They go in there on their own. So that's always helpful. Uh, but you do want to lock them in to prevent uh, raccoons and possums and other critters from harassing them while they're sleeping. So the basics. Before you get a chicken, you're probably getting it for eggs. Um, most cities specify that they have to be egg laying chickens versus meat chickens. Um, so that is something you want to look into. So the average, of course, it depends on breed and the environment and all kinds of other factors. They're going to start off laying about 250 eggs a year, and that's going to drop as they get older. Um, they do start laying eggs between six months, right around six months old. Um, and they will continue laying until they're about seven or eight, generally. Um, of course, at seven years old, they're not going to be laying 250 eggs again in that year. So it, it drops. Again, it really depends on the breeds. Um, they have been bred to be egg layers. And I'll, I'll point out a couple of breeds. Um, I think it's the next slide. So they do live to be between eight and 10 years old. I believe the oldest recorded chicken was 16. So there is a little bit of uh, leeway there. So they are going to be around for a few years after they stop laying eggs. So that's something you wanna be um, aware of. If you're getting them specifically for eggs, you may wanna find a local farm that can take retired chickens. So you can get another one, especially if your city has limits. Um, on the number of birds you can have, like where I live, we can only have five birds. Um, and then the other thing you want to do before you get started is to find a veterinarian in your area that does, um, they're considered exotics for a lot of vets. So most vets aren't going to take care of birds. So you want to find somebody that specifically knows birds. Um, and be aware that a lot of the issues that a chicken's going to have, you can kind of take care of at home. You kind of need to get comfortable dealing with that kind of stuff, especially because they're considered exotics. It's usually a little bit more expensive to take them to the vet than it is, you know, your dog if he's got the sniffles. Um, we have had a chicken get pneumonia. We have had chickens get eye infections. We have had a chicken get um, an injury in her foot, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. But most of those we've been able to handle on our own. One of the chickens that got pneumonia did not make it. So that is something you want to be aware of as well. Because um, you kind of bond to the chickens like you do with a dog or a cat. They have a lot of personality. They're hilarious. So that is something to kind of keep in mind. 
All right. So once you've got all that done and you've decided you want chickens, there's some things you need to consider. Where are you going to get them from? Did you know you can order chickens online? Because you can order baby chicks online. Uh, generally, they are most readily available in the spring. That doesn't mean you can't find them any time of the year. It just makes it a little bit more challenging. Uh, decide how many you want. And it's best to get them all at the same time. So they're all around the same age. It is harder to introduce a new chicken to an already established flock, even if you only have two or three chickens. Um, so it's easier to get them all at the same time. It doesn't matter if they're all the same kind of breed. If you want a couple different kinds of chickens for different color eggs or for just because you like the look of them, that's fine. Um, roughly the same age is going to make things a lot easier for you. Uh, you want to make sure you have bedding. So for baby chicks, you're going to want straw or pine shavings. You don't want to put them just on plain newspaper. I know a lot of people put newspaper down for other birds, but that gets slick once it gets wet. Um, and you don't want them to injure them, potentially injure themselves. You can use newspaper like under the pine shavings, though. You want a heat lamp because baby chicks need to be kept really, really warm. Um, and unless you, I mean, if you live in Florida, outside is really, really warm right now. But you don't want to necessarily keep the baby chicks outside when they're that little. Uh, they are very easy food for predators. And especially in Florida, we've got a lot of things out there that'll eat them when they're that little. <laughs> so we always kept ours inside. Um, the food and water dishes, I've got a picture there. It's nothing complicated when they're that little you can just use a couple little dishes um but as they get bigger these kinds of things are going to make it easier for you uh somewhere for them to live again when we have baby chicks and i think i have a picture on the next slide we just kept them in a cardboard box <laughs> so it doesn't have to be anything fancy at all whatsoever uh you want to make sure that they do have protection from predators Again, like I said, when we had baby chicks, we kept them inside. But that's something you want to consider as they get older. You want to make sure the coop is secure enough to keep uh, raccoons and possums and other birds of prey and snakes from getting inside. And I have a picture of the couple coops we've used. We've used a couple different kinds. We've had chickens for about five years now. And you want to make sure you have the proper food. There is a difference in the food that you feed birds that are laying eggs versus birds that are not yet laying eggs. Um, as they get older, they have higher calcium requirements to make the shell for the eggs. So the food has that additive, but it doesn't when they're that little. So you want to make sure you're buying the right kind of food. And if you're not sure, I'm happy to help you figure it out, or you, you can ask the farm store that you go to, you know, you have baby chicks, they'll be able to point you in the right direction. Uh, you can probably buy it off online from like Chewy or Petco. I do know Petco doesn't carry the food in stores though. All right, so you've decided to get chickens, you've got stuff, now you gotta figure out what breed. So this is one of our girls pictured, I believe, based on the picture, that is Biscuit. So our chickens' names are Biscuit. Biscuit, waffle, and eggnog um, were really clever. And by clever, I mean we make ourselves laugh. That's really the point. Um, so one of the common breeds are Orpingtons. Those are generally considered dual purpose. They're raised for both of their both meat and eggs. Um, their eggs are a light brown color. The uh, Bard Rock, which is what we have, Plymouth Bard Rock are also dual purpose and also have brown eggs. Um, Leghorn is kind is the kind of chicken you think of when you think of chickens, the, the typical white feathers, um, big red comb, long yellow legs. You know, if you're of a certain age, foghorn leghorn is a leghorn chicken. Um, Rhode Island red are kind of a, a red color feathers. Um, brown eggs. Australorps are a breed 
that was raised in Australia or bred in Australia, hence the name. Um, they're specifically egg layers um, and Easter eggers. If you want a fancier looking egg, those eggs are kind of a blue color. So like I said, when you're getting chicks, you can get a couple of different breeds, a few different breeds. You get different eggs. You'll get different quantities of eggs based on the breeds. Um, like I said, average for that first year is about 250 and it goes down. But some, the, I believe it's the Australorps are known for laying up to 300 eggs in a year. So that's almost an egg a day. But uh, you'd be surprised how quickly the eggs add up when uh, all your birds are laying at the same time. You will run out of space very quickly unless you eat eggs a lot um so yeah after you bring the chicks home like i said we kept ours in cardboard boxes they need to be kept between 90 and 95 degrees uh for about four weeks and then once they stop once they go from that fluffy to more feathers you can start reducing the temperature um but you don't necessarily need the coop or the nesting box until they're about four to six weeks. We, we kept ours inside that long. Um, and it, again, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. They don't really care. We bought our first one online and then we built our second one from leftover lumber from a neighbor who was tearing down their fence. So, you know, they, they come in kits, easy to put together with tools that you have. Um, so yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. I'm a professional. Uh, so once they're about four to six weeks old, as long as you're not having extreme heat or extreme cold, they can start being left outside. Um, generally what we did to move them from the cardboard box inside to the outside area was to um, put them in the coop at night and let them spend an entire night in there and then the next day open it. And that same night, they just put themselves back to bed in the coop. So they're, they're pretty good about figuring out where they sleep at night as long as you make it a cozy space for them. And you may need to have that heat lamp, depending on where you live, outside temporarily. Um, and then in the colder months, if you live somewhere that does have an actual winter, unlike Florida, you do need the heat lamp in there at night to keep them warm, even once they're fully feathered. And sometimes we have to put a heat lamp out as well. So here's, like I said, the two coops that we've had. The one on the left was one we bought online. It was a kit. It was easy to put together. We painted it. It's got that I don't know if you can see the run area that's on the left. So if you don't have the ability to have them free range in your backyard, you want to make sure that you have a coop that has a run area, preferably bigger than the one that's pictured there. Um, so that they're protected and enclosed in an area. And something like this is nice because then you can move it to different areas of your yard. So they're not tearing up the same area of, your yard all the time and it gives them the option to eat bugs and grass and gravel and all of the other random things that chickens decide that they like to eat and then that one pictured on the left is built from leftover fence paneling um, and it's got a metal roof to reflect the heat so it doesn't get too hot inside my husband's super handy he built that I did not um, so here's some pictures from when our, our girls were babies. You can see just the cardboard box, nothing fancy, heat lamp, and then a couple small dishes, one for food, one for water. Um, and especially when they're that small, you want to check that their food and water is clean several times during the day because chickens cannot be house trained. You cannot tell them where they can go to the bathroom. They will just go wherever they are, which is always a good time when they decide to come inside. All right, so from chicks to pullets to chickens, pictured here are our girls as pullets. You can see that they have moved from this little ball of floof 
to feathers, but they still look kind of weird. They do go through an awkward teen stage. <laughs> they look really silly. Um, so once you move them outside at about six weeks, they won't even start laying eggs until they're about six or seven months old. You want to make sure that they always have access to food and water, preferably in multiple locations. Um, because like I said, when they're chicks, you want to check their food and water dish a couple of times a day to make sure they're clean. And that holds true through their whole lives. Um, you can feed them most kitchen scraps as treats. Um, they are omnivores. They will eat vegetables and bugs and meat. Um, we always joke that if one of us fell dead in the backyard, that the chickens wouldn't even wait till we were cool to start picking at our parts. Um, they really aren't picky <laughs> as far as food goes. So, you know, if we're cutting up some vegetables and we have some vegetable skins, we'll toss them in the backyard and then the chickens will come eat that. Um, if we have bread that's gone stale, they'll eat that. You don't want to feed them things like bread or other processed foods a whole lot. Um, they don't have as much nutritional value for the birds. So generally just regular veggies or, I mean, they'll eat eggs. <laughs> it's weird, but they will eat eggs. Um, but ideally if you can let them free range in your yard, that's best because then they will get not only the food that you're providing them, you still want to provide them that that food to make sure they're getting all the nutrients they need, but they'll get, you know, the, the grass and the bugs. We honestly have not had an issue with fleas or ticks in our yard since we got chickens. So that's always a bonus. Um, they'll also try and catch like the frogs and toads and you want to prevent that as much as possible because that's kind of gruesome. Um, <laughs> And it does actually make them a little bit sick. So, yeah, but still free range is better. So they can have a, a varied diet. The yolks of the eggs are going to be a lot better. They're going to be thicker. Um, and kind of a darker orange based on what they're eating. So like I said earlier, they can't be house trained. You, you cannot teach a chicken to go to the bathroom in a specific area. It just won't happen. Um, and the coop needs regular cleaning. So daily, you're going to want to scoop out the waste because they will go to the bathroom in there at night. But then about every week or two, you're going to want to pull all the hay that you're using as bedding out of the coop and wipe it down um, just with soap and water. You don't want to use any chemicals in there. Birds are very sensitive as far as their lungs to, um, you know, smells and I uh, lost my train of thought again. So they have very sensitive lungs. So you want to use just plain soap and water to clean their stuff with. Um, and then I'm sure you've heard the phrase pecking order that literally comes from birds because they do establish a pecking order and they're continuously reestablishing their pecking order. Um, it doesn't usually change a whole lot, but we've had an issue where we had a chicken one waffle hurt her leg um, and she was the second in the pecking order at the time but we had to pull her inside and have her set up in our guest bathroom for about six weeks while her leg healed uh, there wasn't an obvious break or anything that we thought worth taking her to the vet for she just needed to rest and and let it heal so when we put her back outside she was no longer second in the pecking order and they had to reestablish it and she still gets kind of picked on and it's been about a year. So they, that's something they do kind of pick on each other. And as long as they're not grievous, grievously injuring each other, you just kind of need to let it happen. Um, it's kind of rough to watch sometimes though, but they don't usually actually hurt each other. Um, it's more posturing most of the time. So here's a couple pictures of our birds. So like I said, on the left, we had to bring Waffle inside for a while and we set her up in our guest bathroom and she decided to 
not sit in the nest we made for her, but instead the box that was sitting in a tub that had spare hay in it. So when we needed to clean, we had fresh hay. Um, because chickens are jerks. <laughs> that middle picture are our girls, Biscuit and Waffle, and then the neighborhood rabbit that they used to hang out with. His name was Kyle. The three of them were pals, and it was just a lot of fun to watch. Um, and then the one on the right is, again, Waffle. She, uh, when we put her back outside after her injury, <laughs> she would get picked on so much that she would run up to the back door and scream to be let in. And we felt so bad for her. We would just let her inside. And uh, in the evening, that's right there on the arm of that couch is where she thought she should sleep the night. That was her, uh, her indoor coop area. We don't let her do that anymore. We got tired of cleaning up the chicken poop. Uh, so <laughs> here's a couple of videos um, that I think are fun that kind of show you their different noises. So this first one is their happy noises because they're getting mealworms. Can't hear. Oh no. Is it muted? Oh no. We're not getting any sound coming through. Yeah, I see that. Um, if you want to stop sharing and then share again and make sure you click uh, share computer sounds at the bottom. Make sure you mute your computer. Whoa. Oh gosh. Turn your computer sound all the way down again. <laughs> ah, technical issues. I'm right, try to play share it. the sound. Oh, you it, you're supposed to do it whenever you share the whole thing. There's a, like a checkbox at the bottom. Did you see that? Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Sorry, I'm really bad at share audio. Oh, there it is. Ha! -ha. Oh my goodness. I think I figured it out. Let's let's try now. No. All right, let me try one more time and then I'll stop, I promise. Okay. We can just go on. There we go. Maybe? Yeah, we can hear him. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Oh no. All right. Happy happy chicken sounds. <laughs> <laughs> So that's happy chicken sounds. This is somebody's laying in the nesting box and I want access to that nesting box. Angry chicken sounds that you, this is part of why I said, talk to your neighbors and make sure that they don't mind um, animal sounds. This is kind of loud. So, and 
this this is why she was mad. So that's Biscuit, by the way. So you'll notice that there are two nesting boxes in there, but she wants that specific one um, because chickens, I mean, that's really the only answer that I have to why they're being weird. Um, but that noise does echo. You can hear it throughout most of our neighborhood. So our neighbors don't mind. And when we have a surplus of eggs, they get some, which is very nice because those chickens are loud. Um, and the one in the nesting box was eggnog. Now, when they were little, I could not tell them apart. But now that we've kind of gotten to know them, they have very distinct personalities and very distinct features that we can um, use to identify which one's which. But sometimes we still have to have them standing next to each other to be like, oh, okay, that one's, you know, that's Biscuit. So they do, uh, they do kind of look alike but now I can tell them apart. So that's, that's their screaming. So on to the eggs, which is the reason I think most people get back here chickens. So like I've said, they start laying about six months old, give or take. Um, I think eggnog didn't start laying until she was about nine months old. So there's obviously a lot of variety there. So I actually took this picture last night. We have three chickens, each egg, is a different color. So even from the same bird, the eggs are going to be different colors and the yolks are going to be different colors based on what they're eating, the weather, um, temperature, stress, etc. So when they very start laying and even sometimes as they're as they get older, they'll lay basically fake eggs. Um, like we've had some like this big. So you can't see, whatever, about that big. Um, those don't have any yolk in them or they'll be misshapen or the shell will be weird or some other thing will happen. And those, those eggs you can't really use for anything. But as soon as they start laying, you'll want to remove the eggs as soon as possible. We do it in the evenings because... If an egg breaks in the nesting box, they will eat it. And then they will learn that eggs are food and they will start breaking the eggs intentionally. And then you won't get any eggs because they're going to be like, oh, that's food. Because chickens. Um, you can still feed them to them. Uh, the shells are actually pretty good for them. They get that calcium back. You'll want to grind the shells up pretty small so they don't look reminiscent to eggshells anymore um, almost into a powder and you can just add that to their food and that's actually really good for them um, so like I said the the egg color the yolk color the size of the egg the you know the spots I don't know if you can see the one on the top right is kind of speckled the one on the top left is almost two-tone it just it varies um, and because they're fresh eggs, they do not have to be refrigerated. If you rinse them off and you bring them in, it kind of removes that protective coating. So at that point, you'll want to refrigerate them. But our eggs just sit on the kitchen counter in an egg crate. Um, and we rinse them right before we use them because sometimes there's, yeah, sometimes there's poo stuck to the shell. Sometimes there's hay stuck to the shell. Sometimes it's just got a weird something on it that you can't identify. So you do want to rinse the eggshells before you use them to make sure they're clean. Um, and you do want to check periodically to make sure that the eggs are good. So if you don't know the trick, you get a bowl or a glass of water and you put the egg in it. If the egg's still okay to eat, it's going to sink 
if it is bad, it'll float and just don't even don't even crack that egg open. If it floats, it's probably there's probably some sort of something that's rotten in it. So do not don't break that shell if you can help it. It'll smell really bad. Um, and then something a lot of people ask, and it's okay. It's not something that you would think about. None of the eggs are going to turn into chicks unless you have a rooster. They're not going to be fertilized. So even if you go out of town and a neighbor watches the chickens and they don't collect the eggs, they're still just going to be eggs when you get back. Um, they're not going to hatch. It takes about three weeks for a fertilized egg, four weeks to hatch into a chicken. But without a rooster, you don't have to worry about it. So I, I kind of mentioned some common concerns that you may have with chickens as far as issues. Uh, they do molt, which is the equivalent of like a dog or cat shedding their winter or summer fur. That's not something you want to be concerned about, but it is a little distressing when you go in and you go to let them out in the morning and the nesting box is just full of feathers. It looks like a chicken exploded. Um, the chickens are fine. <laughs> <laughs> they're just molting uh, and they're not going to lay eggs when they're molting. They do look a little bit silly. They get some bald patches sometimes and you kind of feel bad for them, <laughs> but they're fine. Um, so husbandry is the care of the chickens. Generally, if there's something wrong, if your chicken's acting weird, if they're lethargic, you want to look at how you're caring for them. First, it might be an issue of water or food quality. Maybe the food's gone bad. Uh, you know, maybe the bedding needs to be changed. Maybe they're not getting enough fresh air or something. You want to look at all of the things that you can control first um, because it's more than likely going to fix the issue. Sometimes they're going to lay bad eggs. It just happens. If they continuously lay bad eggs, then that's something you want to be concerned about. Um, predators, dogs, cats, possums, raccoons, hawks, snakes. Um, if you live in the country, bears, coyotes, all of those things can attack your chickens. Um, so if you do have free range chickens in your backyard, like we do, you want to make sure they have plenty of hiding places so they can one, get out of the sun and two, hide from the hawks when they fly over. We can always tell when a hawk's flown over our backyard because the chickens just scatter. They run for the trees. Um, the snakes are generally only going to be interested in the eggs. They're going to leave the chickens alone unless you live somewhere with big snakes. But all of them can kind of mess with the chickens, and that's why you want to have a secure coop, especially at night. You can shut up that it's hard for something to open. Um, some illnesses, they can get parasites, just like any other critters. They can get crop bound, which is when, so when, it, when the chickens eat, they have a pouch in their throat that's called their crop, and it can get kind of clogged up. So that's something that if your chicken's not eating a lot, or if they're supposed to be laying eggs and they're not. Um, and their throat will kind of get swollen. So that's something you would definitely want to vet for. Uh, they can get the cold and flu. The bird flu is a legitimate concern. They're going to get that kind of thing from the wild birds flying in your yard. Bumblefoot is something that we've had the pleasure, and by pleasure I'm being sarcastic, of dealing with recently for biscuit. I don't know if you can see very well, there's that picture with the circle. There's a hole in her foot that is not supposed to be there. So basically what happens with Bumblefoot is they get a scratch or a puncture wound or something, and it gets infected. And this is something that for like a dog or cat, you would take them to the vet for. But for chickens, you can actually kind of do it them yourself uh, because of the way their anatomy is. And you would definitely want to do some more research on this before doing it yourself. But you basically take the, there's a scab on the wound. You take the scab off and then you kind of like with a, 
like with a pimple, you, you press the infection out um, and then you clean it and keep it clean for as long as it takes for it to heal up. So we brought her in every night and cleaned out her foot every night on our dining room table. So, yeah, that's something you want to keep an eye out for. Uh, she started acting lethargic and not interested in treats, and that's how we knew something was wrong. We checked her feet. So that's basically it. I know I said a lot, but they really are pretty easy to care for, especially once they get past the pull it stage. Um, they're really cheap, guys. You can get a 50 pound bag of chicken feed, which lasts us for three chickens, probably two months for $15, depending on where you get it from. Um, maybe 20 bucks and you get, I don't know, we probably get three or four, maybe five dozen eggs out of that, depending on the time of year. Um, fresh eggs are significant. If you've never had a fresh egg, highly recommend it. Significantly better. The yolks are thicker. The flavor's better. Like it's just, they're incredible. Um, once everything is set up and the chicks are grown, scoop the coop, make sure they have food and water, five minutes a day. Really doesn't take that long. And they definitely have distinct personalities. And so this link is to a Daily Mail article. However, with the caveat, that article does link to like three different scientific um, studies done on chickens and their personalities. So if you want to check it out, just Google Intelligent Empathy Daily Mail Chicken, and you should find that link. Um, so I've got the link here too. I think that's my last slide. That's excellent. So those are some of the references, the University of Florida IFAS class that I mentioned, the link is here. Um, so go there, it'll ask you to click the link to see if a class is available, take the quiz. And then at the end of the quiz, it gives you the links to sign up for the Zoom classes. Um, so yeah. That's really it. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to chime in. Oh, wait a minute. I don't see any questions yet. I just, um, I shared those links in the- uh, Oh, good, excellent. So you can click on those. If anyone Thanks. has any questions, let us know. I was, when I was watching the video of them eating the, um, mealworms, the food out of your hand. Yeah. Um, it doesn't hurt. Like they don't poke you. <laughs> so it doesn't feel great, but <laughs> they don't necessarily like, they don't break the skin. Like there's no visible wound. It's just kind of a quick pinch if they get the skin. However, if I do that and I have nail polish on, they're like, ooh, what is this? Oh no. And then they bite my finger and that hurts because they usually get the cuticle and that sensitive mm -hmm. skin and eggnog's the worst about it. She's like, oh, what is, I haven't had this before. Let me bite that. <laughs> and they well, try it dog, over and over. My dog sometimes gets me when I'm feeding him treats. So <laughs> it's pretty usual, I think. Jen asks, what's the funniest thing any of your chickens has done? So probably with Waffle, when she had the hurt leg and we tried to reintroduce her and then she kept coming back to the back door, she once we let her in, she kind of lorded it over the other two chickens. She would kind of walk back and forth in front of the glass door <laughs> and then just sit on the rug <laughs> and just like right in front of the door. So the other chickens could see her, but not get to her. That's funny. <laughs> she was ridiculous. She's like, look at me. <laughs> and then, I mean, just watching them run is a riot. I don't know why. We've had chickens for five years, and I still just giggle every time I see them run. They're so awkward. <laughs> so awkward. Oh. All right. Well, I think that's it. I don't see any questions in the comments. Cool. But um, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for if you're whether you're watching it live or watching 
the replay. I am going to put a link in the comments so you can let us know what you thought about today's program and also let us know if you have any topics you'd like to see covered in the future. And that is everyone. So everything. So thank you everyone for tuning in. Oh, we have a, another question. Let's see. <laughs> what does the chicken at the top of the pecking order get? Like what is their hierarchy? So generally they get to eat first. Mm. Um, so Biscuit is the leader of our little flock and she always has been surprisingly, um, even when we had to bring her inside for health issues. She had, she's the one that had the eye infection that we had to rinse out. Um, so she gets to eat first, she gets the treats first and the other two chickens generally don't fight her back if she like chases them off from something. They just kind of run mm. away. So best so food, most awesome. food. Yeah. She's we also, also had a chihuahua. <laughs> <It's> like... mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Um, all right. I was just, uh, okay. I'm just checking to see. We do actually have a lot of books at the library on backyard chickens. So if you just um, kind of go and uh, to OCLS.info and so uh, click on books, what does it say? Books, movies, and more. Um, and then you can search like backyard chickens or pet chickens and you'll find a whole bunch of books there. So um, here, I'll give you the direct link so you can just search in there. And yeah, so that, that now it's everything. Thank you everyone for tuning in and uh, everyone stay safe and we'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Bye everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be the first to find out when we have new fun and informative videos for you. Orange County Library System is your place to learn, grow, connect.